Hey, I'm Matt Lowell from Low Moon, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. This new album, um, A Modern Life, is like my first introduction of the of the band, and like just listening to the first couple of tracks, I was already like instantly hooked. So um, I'm a new fan. So thanks oh, for welcome. thanks for bringing me on board to this adventure of Low Moon. Uh, thanks for being here. That's super sweet. <laughs> so as we as we're getting ready to for the release of this record, this is your sophomore album, and uh, once again you guys are taking us into this like new atmosphere with this record. Um, just the introduction and and the first track carried away, it just it makes me just go into this new atmosphere. Like I I, I dive into this new world um, because of the way that you guys created the music, because of your lyrics, because of your voice. Um, can you talk to me about the creative process of this record and, and how would you say this record was different from the self-titled back in 2017, 2018? Yeah, I, th I think the first, the biggest difference was that we had played a lot of shows on the first album. Um, and we, we, we were positive that we wanted to make a band record, a record that felt like us playing in the room and that felt like it had an energy about it that we were able to capture in our live shows and, and build on. And that was the biggest difference. I mean, we had Sterling in, in the fold this time. So we had the, a drummer full time. And um, I think we just committed to that idea of what's it feel like when we're having a conversation together in a room as a band. This time around, like you come into the studio, you have you mentioned you have the drummer now. Um, you know, how different is that atmosphere between all of you as you guys are, do you guys all record or write together or is it just you writing and then the band comes in? Yeah, uh, it's, I usually start it, um, the writing and, or um, Sam and I, I do a bit there. I mean, it just kind of depends what the song kind of needs and where it's at. I mean, there are moments where I take a full song into the band and, they just jump in on it and uh, we, 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 you know, finish it together. Um, but, you know, when we came off the road in 2018, I think we were all feeling we were tired and we needed a, a, a break from just, we needed to think about where we wanted to go. And I kind of took that time and sat down and started, you know, they always say like you have 10 years to make your fresh, you know, your first album, and then you have like a, a year to make the sophomore record. I mean, was in there so we got a little more time but um i just needed to figure out what i wanted to say and how i wanted to say it and um so we entered we you know like every record i think there's a few false starts where you think you're making the record but you're not making the record yet it's like oh that all right we're not making that record we're making this kind of record oh we're not making that record and so um it was just a process to figure out the kind of direction and how we wanted to, to, to approach it. And, and once we, and really it just happened by the first song I think we jammed on was expectations. And it was a song that I was like, this has to feel like a band. Like it has to have this energy. We need energy. Um, and so brought that to the guys and that just took on a life of its own. And then that, that, that kind of shaped, you know, once that song and dream never dies were, there it kind of felt like I knew what I was talking about thematically and I knew what the band needed to sound like um, and we just kept diving in. The fact that Expectations, the more of a band kind of uh, live show kind of track was what kind of kickstarted this album. Um, how did you go from, from that song to a song like Carried Away where I feel like um, it's, it's like you take me into the soundscape. So differentiating the the sounds that we hear on this record like how did you guys go along how did you guys create that and at the same time how were you able to make it make sense on these 10 tracks uh, i hope it makes sense but i i think that that um as a band we were just we understand that we well i think it has to do with there's an expanse to what we like to do and where the reach is. And there's always these oceanic moments that we talked about a lot on the first record of how do we get this to feel expansive 
but intimate. And that's just the place that we really feel comfortable exploring. So to answer your question, we don't really know. We just, we do one thing and, and we chase that down until it, it has a feeling. Um, and I know that for a song like Expectations, it's a different emotional ride. It's a different emotional ride than, say, Carried Away or Dream. But it's connected into the fabric of what it's what it's like being in, in Low Moon, I guess. It's just a band. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I, I think it's... Uh, it it's something that we've maybe in the past shy away from like, Oh, is this low moon enough? You know, the expectations low moon. And, and it is because it's us playing it and it's us me singing it. And we're talking about something that's important to us. So that's when that's where the through line comes in and carried away actually was a completely different intro only to about, two weeks before the record was getting mastered. So uh, that song actually started completely different and it didn't, and it had actually way more Rocky intro and we, we cut it at the last second um, to kind of create this world where you're entering into an album and a low moon album. We, the way I, I think we were thinking about it was from LM one to a modern life. It was like, we needed a, we needed to bring you into the journey. We couldn't just, hit you over the head right away because that's not really the kind of band we are anyway so yeah it was just that you know, playing with that now aside from like the soundscapes that that was one of the things that i really loved uh about this this record um and i guess at the same time about carried away um aside from that is that i i listen to your voice as an instrument mm -hmm. uh I don't know how else to explain it, but I feel like you have this certain tone in your voice that um, without you being a part of it, for example, on a song like Carried Away, without you singing it, I, I don't feel Carried Away is complete. Like, I feel like I need that certain tone that you have. How do you go about as far as like your vocals, um, and, and especially during the writing process? Like, are you consider? do you have that in mind? the entire time that you're writing or is this something that you write the lyrics and then once you hit the studio, your vocals just come out the way that they do? No, I, the vocals are like the most important piece of the puzzle for me. I mean, I, I obsess over the vocals for a, a long time and I probably sang carried away. I just sing it a lot. And then I, and then I choose the take that feels like I'm hitting on the emotion. Again, it's all comes back to the feeling of it. Um, I don't know the timbre of it feeling like an instrument. I think that's just the way I sing. So like that, that's awesome because that my favorite singers, that's what, that's what they do. So um, that's, that's really awesome to hear. But I think it's not like I'm just in there one take and it's like, all right, we got it. Like, I'll, I'll come. I mean, I, I obsess over it and I, and I, and I just, you know, and, and like anything, the more you sing something or the more you play something, it just becomes a little bit more natural and it becomes a little bit more, you know, I don't know, like the emotion is easier to, to capture. Um, and I, I, we, we, I pay a lot of attention to that. Um, you know, especially when it comes to the recording of it, the demos, Sometimes it's just me on the, on the vo on a voice memo. So like, I, I mean, maybe that has a feeling. I have no idea. <laughs> How do you make it so smooth though? Just because you're, you're not, you're touching, like you're being vulnerable on this record. Uh, you give us this sense of vulnerability struggle, but at the same time, like the sense of hope, but throughout each track, like you're, it's just, your voice is just so smooth throughout it. Like, I don't feel like there's like pain coming out of your vocals. Um, so how do you how do you go about that? Um, I have no idea. That's super sweet. I really don't know. Um, it's just a it's just the way I, you know what it is. I I think it's just the way I express myself is in that tone, um, and um, it's where I feel the most comfortable. I guess um, it honestly just also just comes down to if I like hearing my voice, and the guys will tell you. I mean, like. It takes a lot for me to be like this vocal's done, you know. Um, so yeah, I just I just don't think 
it's the hardest part of the process for me. So the fact that you think it sounds smooth, I'm really happy because it's really hard for me to be happy with the vocal. Super hard. That's awesome. I'm glad you think the vocal is good. <laughs> glad you approved. <laughs> as far as production goes, uh, you co-produced this um, record as well. So, you know, what was it about this this new producer that you worked with that, you know, drew your attention in the first place? And, you know, how different was it working with him compared to working with Chris Walla on the, on the debut album? Yeah, well, we met Eve um, through a friend because Eve was, you know, he'd made the Eve's Tumor record, which we loved. And, and then he um, came from this world of getting a band to sound great. And he wanted and he was not afraid of making a band record. And I think there's. It's tough to find producers these days that that want to make band records. You know, a lot of producers are just not interested in getting a band to try to sound like a band, um, which is fine. It's just is what it is. Um, and Eve was down with that. And Eve really wanted to chase that. And Eve really wanted to help us get there. So um, when I met Eve, I was immediately into his enthusiasm for that because that's kind of a lost art and a lot of producers aren't paying attention to that. So that was really great. And he was a a really good personality in the studio. He was constantly egging us on to continue to push and 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 if and I think with the type of band that we are, we are obsessed with re- with record making and we have a reverence for it. And it's very important to us. And we need a producer that is down to just like follow us because there might be a moment where we're like, it's not right. We just have to do it again. And the producer will either A, go, you guys are on your own. I can't do this anymore. Or B, oh, okay, interesting. What do you think? And he was a B guy. You know, he was an, oh, interesting. What do you, let's do it. So we need a guy like that. Um, funnily enough, we came to the end of the record and um, there were two songs that were kind of sitting in the balance. And I had written Digging Up the Dead and Modern Life. And we had been, I wrote Digging Up the Dead and it was just like, this thing that I thought was good and we wanted to put on the record and then um, Modern Life wasn't, wasn't completely done yet. So we actually went back and hit up Chris Walla and, and, and he worked on those two songs with us for the, to, to kind of finish the album. It was like, we had two more songs. He came in, felt great to be in, um, in with him again and, and just get his spirit on it as well. It's like, you know, this is just, it's a very collaborative process making records. It's kind of funny that like the title track was one of the, last songs to kind of be created well Um, the well there were about 300 versions of that song so it was just the the version that ended up making the record was the last version that we landed on (laughs) now the fact that you said eve is a a b guy um he's willing to to try new things with you guys did you find did the band find themselves experimenting during this record and if so how did you guys go about that we're always experimenting. I, I, I do consider us a band that likes the rabbit hole, that likes the journey of making a record, that enjoys being in the studio, discovering what a song could be. Um, and that kind of just keeps the creative. We just like being creative in the studio. I don't think it's, it doesn't ever feel like a, um, it doesn't ever feel like it's done. It's just at the point where you have to let it go. So, and that's just always going to be the way it is with us. I just know that it's the way it is with me. I don't ever think that it's completely finished. It's just, that's the time to, to, that it has to, that it has to be put to bed. And you might not have any more ideas in that. Maybe that energy is better placed somewhere doing something new. So, yeah. Now, when you guys come together uh, to either once that recording or once the lyrics are written or right before you guys hit the studio, do you guys come together and come up with like the kinds of like um, cadences or BPMs in advance, or is this something that just kind of happens naturally as you guys are recording each track? Um, sometimes it. Sometimes we chase down whatever I'm. However, I'm feeling. The vo- honestly, it's really about where the vocal is sitting next to the to the drum track, and I have a very very weird relationship with tempo i mean it's just it's very touch and go some days i'll come in 
and have five cups of coffee and think that a song should be seven BPM faster. And then I start singing or listening back and I'm like, that was a really bad choice. Okay, let's go back to where we were. Um, or sometimes that's like the right choice, you know? So that is always a discovery with us. Um, sometimes it's it's just like there and the tempo and the cadence and the BPM is just built into whatever the demo is. Sometimes like the song like Dream Never Dies, Sam and I worked on that demo and the writing of that demo was kind of like the, the tempo was pretty much written into the song. Like we had a drum beat that changed over time, but like the, the tempo never changed from day one to the last day of recording. Um, so yeah, that's like a, a whole world and rabbit hole worth going down that I don't really understand tempo. It's mind boggling. Like, it's so crazy, you know, working on something at that you think should be fast at 95 BPM, like what I would consider fast for something. And then you slow it down five BPM and all of a sudden it actually just feels right, you know? So you can get obsessed with tempo. Um, yeah. It's, it's one of those things. Like I, I like to think about it as like when you, when you hit the LA traffic, you can be one or two minutes late, but those one or two minutes is going to add another 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> So it's like the same thing with with the tempo, and I feel like it can change the dynamic of the song itself. Um, with saying that, during the recording process, did you find any one song in particular that you ended up stepping out of your comfort zone vocally, um, trying a, di a different kind of range or a different kind of tone? Um, and you know, what was that experience like? Yeah, um, I think vocally, "Dream Never Dies" was a different tone. I mean, it's a huge range of Vocally for me, it's tough to sing um, that one. And when we're rehearsing it now, I'm like, this is a real, this is a range, you know, this is a world um, that will take practice and time to get right. Um, and expectations as well, just trying to find that line between pushing my voice and making sure that it was feeling comfortable, but also feeling angsty um, because that's what the song is, you know, that, when I was 16, I had such big dreams that has to have weight to it. Um, so it was really fun, actually, um, and eye-opening to kind of push on the uh, on the, vo the, vo the vocals this time around. What song would you say the band challenged as a whole to either finalize aside aside from the title track, of course? That was, um, that was the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> but like, was there a particular song that you guys were? I mean, you guys almost scratched just because it was giving you such a hard time to to finalize it. Modern life. That song was the song. <laughs> so that's just it. <laughs> it just is. I mean, I, I there were other songs that were scratched. You know, there were like other songs that we worked on for ages and ages, and there's long demos and. And we scratched them. But Modern Life was the only one that we knew had something and we just had to get it. We had to get it there. <laughs> There's always one. There's always one. <laughs> you, you mentioned in the beginning of this interview that uh, the debut album, you guys had the opportunity of performance, of touring and, and playing shows. Um, obviously, with the last two years, that hasn't been possible. So... How much of a dynamic did that have in uh, the mindset or the mentality of the recording process of this album? Well, we didn't record much over the so the record record was pretty much done in 2020. There were some bits of Bob's to do that just because of the pandemic we got the time to do, but it wasn't it didn't seep in the fact that we hadn't played a show that up to you know we still haven't played a show. So that hasn't really seeped in. That didn't really seep into this record. Um, so we were lucky about that. But um, yeah, I think just knowing that we wanted to make the record as a band, because we had just spent a lot of time on the road together playing as a band, was very important. Um, and I think that was just because we had played a lot together. But yeah, I don't, uh, you know, because we recorded a lot of this in 20, well, we started in 2018. So it's right before this all kind of happened. Yeah, I mean, like, we were supposed to put our record out in 2020. And then wow. Yeah. Well, lastly, this record drops February 25th. Um, what excites you most about this album? The, the most exciting part about 
this album is that I do feel like we took a step um, and we took chances that we definitely wouldn't have taken on the first record. And we are a much better live band now through playing so many shows that it's going to be really, really exciting to come full circle and get this song, get these songs out and play them for people. I mean, we've started rehearsing and it's really, really interesting that remembering, like we were saying the other day, like, do you remember where we were when we were rehearsing for the first album? When we got the album done and we were like, let's get in a room. We have to play shows and where we are now. Like, and that's just awesome. Cause that means that we're taking steps in the right direction and we're growing as a unit. And that's really exciting. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, live shows from you guys. And like I said, I'm a brand new fan. And where, where, I am, where are you located? I'm here in LA. I'm, I'm here in LA. You'll be at the LA shows. Yes. So yeah. I, d I definitely will be. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, thank you again for taking the time to talk to me. And congratulations in advance with this record. I know once it drops, it's going to... Uh, Fans are just going to fall in love. So, oh, Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me.